We're going to give some context for this video. This is the Looney Turtle. His biggest series are fan theory videos on FNAF, Steven Universe, and Gravity Falls. The history between the Looney Turtle and myself can be seen in my Rise and Fall of the Rift series. Recently, Looney and I sat down for a discussion, I think roughly about 30 minutes or so, that I was supposed to edit out all the non-Rift related discussion. Those talks included topics about the Secret Rift, which is run by Secret Dreamer, Kichi FIM, Spirited Rainbow, The Editor, Lilac Galaxy, myself, and Twist of Fate. The Room is a combination of brony analysts, voice actors, singers, and I'm probably forgetting something else. But you get the idea. Looney recently handed off the reins to the Rift Cafe to Unova Brony, and I'm going to presume second opinion. The discussion I had with the Looney Turtle was insightful, polite, and well thought out. I will not be showing it, and you might find that confusing, so we're going to go with the pros. It would have gave fans the rare look from both perspectives behind the fracture. In both of these brony factions, a complete story that would have been able to hold everyone's attention. And here's the rub. Recently, my desktop had to go into the shop because there were too many things going wrong with it. My recording of Looney and the Rift discussion was on that. And Pastel Pros happened to be in the call where she was doing her own recording. That recording was about a half hour longer than mine. There was some urgent and important questions on that call, kids. And Looney opted to ask Pastel Pros questions about me, but not to me. And when I confronted about him, his response, which is about a week old by now, Oh, you weren't supposed to hear that. And that's it. I haven't heard anything further on that topic. At every fucking opportunity where I gave Looney a chance to rebuild himself to open the door to make things right, Looney turns around and pulls some sneaky bullcrap. So here's the show I had planned and written previously in response to Looney's video. Eric, you are a 16-year-old edgelord, at least in spirit. You were born that way, you live that way, until the heat death of the universe, you're gonna die that way. Alright, this is a video from the Looney Turtle. It's called Ranting About Rants. She did what? Kick her from the fandom and burn her like a witch! Oh uh, wait, if she's kicked from the fandom, then how can you burn her? Uh, then burn her like a witch, then kick her from the fandom. Yeah, that's what I said. So I'm going to draw an assumption on somewhat recent events. If this wasn't just a meme the person in question Looney is drawing attention to is Fallen Wish. We'll get back to that. Hello interwebs, I'm Eric and welcome to the Looney Turtle. So I've been a member of the Rift community, a subset of the Brony community, for a few years now and in that time there's been- Actually, the term you're thinking of is analyst community that evolved into a more looser knit collective of content creators. Sorry for being nitpicky. Just figured I'd get warmed up. And a fair amount of drama. So much that some people have based their channels entirely around ranting about it. I find it a little ironic that a group of people who were brought together by a show that revolves around the magic of friendship is gravitating around this kind of destructive- I'm going to assume that the Looney Turtle meant me. I mean, he is using my video footage without crediting me, something Looney's had trouble with in the past when he hired Lightning Bliss and fought with her about giving credit for her artwork. I could argue with Jerry Pete saying all I do is drama. I can even somewhat forgive that. Maybe Pete doesn't hold podcasts in high regard, but seeing as how Looney cut his teeth in the fandom doing CBD, aka Capuscular Bronies Discuss, it was a brony podcast, this is a blatant misdirection. I have a podcast that encompasses far more guests in the fandom than CBD ever had. Hell, I can even say the same things about the PFC when I was a part of that. Drawing in comparison, PFC was a more diversified podcast to Capuscular Bronies discuss. And why I've slacked off on analysis, there's no denying, despite my recent video on the movie, yes, I could stand to be a bit more active on the review and analysis circuit. Unless, of course, you're referring to all well, what troublemakers in my discussion who foxwell unless you're a hack like doodle tones looney i can't imagine anyone having to shoot that low if this was the crux of your video 
We literally watch a show with friendship morals and follow a group that embodies harmonious virtues. We should be putting these morals of redemption, honesty, understanding, and forgiveness to use, but for some reason this idealistic philosophy is just a part of the cartoon that brought us all together. The sh all right, let's bust this one out, Looney. I do understand what forgiveness means. This is Vita. He brought about the fall of the third analysis rift, which subsequently brought about the birth of the secret rift. Of course, it was going beforehand. But until Vita spilled the beans to Fallen Wish, who was running the rift at the time, the room was Plan B. I forgave Vita for that. It didn't hurt the fact we ended up winning. And Looney, your dreams of backing or being behind a gathering of Brony community died that day we officially broke away. And let's be honest, that's what this is about. I offered you a spot in the Seeker Rift, Kichi FIM, Spirited Rainbow, the editor, Lilac Galaxy, Secret Dreamer, and Twist of Fate, as well as Tricky Fox, all said no to you. You know this because I've straight up told you all of these Secret Rift mods told you to fly a kite. None of these people have drama channels. The guy who does whole scale drama was the only guy willing to work with you. And it's not because I forgave you, it's because I thought you might be a valuable resource. That it would be foolish to throw the baby out with the bathwater, and ditching your talent because you're a shitty human being would be nearsighted. I didn't have to forgive you to see that you have talent. The editor, Tricky Fox, Secret Dreamer, Kichi FIM, Spirited Rainbow, Lilac Galaxy, and Twisted Fate felt that you were untrustworthy from past experiences. That no amount of talent would be worth dealing with you. This is a fact. Not a narrative spin. Joe may be preaching to the choir, but I suppose it's understandable. When rant videos are made, it's usually a spur of the moment thing rather than a carefully considered narrative. You want to bring them down a peg, treat them like a child, sit them down, or get them to drink bleach. Drink bleach and die, Looney. Go to a Google Hangout and hang yourself. Buy a rope. You can do it, Looney. Everything will eventually rot away. In fact, you could stop the pain this very moment by putting a bullet straight through your head. That was a collection of memes, so it was just a joke, right? Nope. If this was the friendly, joking use of a meme, then it would have been implemented in a joking manner. But this video was made with intent. He genuinely hates my guts and wanted me dead because my first attempt at running a sky group didn't end. First, the elephant in the room. That was me. Hi, I'm Anthony Aguilar. That wasn't a spur of the moment thing at all. Looney kept sending Stardust to tell me they might kick me from the group for daring to express how I felt about Minty Root's animation project. I don't even ruin really, what Dinky's Destiny maybe. I don't know. Before this situation, Looney had become a very frustrating individual. I even conveyed this in my video, My Final Thoughts in the Rift. I have asked you to back off on me several times, and you kept sending Stardust to poke me. Hey, they're going to kick you out. Now, you could sit there and say, FNGR, this was all over a Skype chat group. Let's just play this game. Money is just paper. Boobs are just sacks of fat. Your thousand dollar computer is just a series of wires and metal. You see what I'm getting at? If you break things down to their base forms, you can take the magic out of anything. The video in question I did was three years old. That room was under Looney's control and was dead for two years. You remark on how it didn't go well for me. If I recall correctly, I called you from BC that year a room filled with Voice of Reason, Crown Prince, Fallen Wish, Stardust, and Diana Dreams, and had them all say hi to you, and I hung up. Star and Fallen, both of your mods at that time told me that you were infuriated with me. But Looney, it was just a phone call, and it wasn't even long. I can't even imagine why you would get so angry, except that was carefully considered and done in such a way to stick in the knife and twist it a little. See, that's the difference between you and I. When I'm causing you discomfort, it was carefully considered. When you do it on such a regular basis, you'd have me believe, oops, Looney did another boom boom in his diaper. Well, gee shucks, he doesn't know any better. It's Looney, just being Looney, and don't take it personal. Either you're a lying sack of shit or sickeningly incompetent. 
You can let your fans decide. And wasn't wrong for getting so passionate. From his perspective, I was trying to screw with him, when in reality, I was trying to help him. Miscommunication and assumptions led to this video, and he eventually apologized for being so rude. Now, I'm not going to say who this person is for two reasons. For one, I don't want my audience to flood his channel with hate. What if you tell them really nicely not to hate him? I can tell them anything, but do people always- Barring Foxwell, I do have some pretty reasonable fans. My fans do mind their P's and Q's. Quite frankly, if they don't, that just gives me another week of content if they don't. I'm totally fine calling out my audience. Take Mintheart, for example. As for miscommunication, we've talked a lot of times that week when you tossed me. You kept saying you're fine, and only to have someone else tell me I was in trouble and that my days in the rift were numbered. You have railroaded several of my friends in the past, at least three off the top of my head. Was I to assume I was going to be all right? Jesus, what do I look like, some dumbass like Monkey Jones? That I'm too cool to get screwed with over everyone else because... This handshake here is Looney suggesting he, out of the goodness and kindness of his heart, he opened up a dialogue. Nothing of the sort happened. Fallen Wish was in charge of the Rift at the time. She, for whatever reason, had explained to Looney, I was getting back in, who at the time said, I don't recall Anthony saying he was sorry, and that's when I got super quiet. And for better or for worse, I'd argue my version makes me look worse. But it's true, I don't recall apologizing. Looney never wished to deal with me again when he was running the show, and only when he had to. And when the power had slipped away from him, he then considered talking to me. Wait, I'm also gonna review the comments before they get published. Good. The second reason is because I don't support his content. If I don't support something, then I don't want to make it easy for my viewers to find it. All publicity is good publicity, after all. That being said, I bring this person up as an example of how heated and destructive a rant video can be. Not only was he burning a bridge at this point, but he also wasn't pointing out the problem in a meaningful way. When you yell at people, they tend to shut down or start shouting back, primarily because because our fight or flight instincts start to- I have sat down on several long discussions with Looney, where he was the kid with all the toys in the playground. I still stand behind my remark, where he banned Vita, and I said it was petty and bullshit, and based on the room's loose-fitting criteria. I've already covered it all in my Fall of the Rift series, a series you yourself said was fairly accurate, which is weird for a guy who doesn't support my content. The secret Rift staff have included Kichi FIM and at least Secret Dreamer have had a firm discussion with yourself and no one yelled at you, at least at first. There's also the time that you tried to book a room at a convention for the Secret Rift and the Rift Cafe without asking or telling anyone else on either side, Looney. Kichi FIM. You know what, Anthony? I, I got this one. This is the Looney Turtle. Now, I don't know much about the Looney Turtle. I don't really have a lot of interactions with the guy. I haven't heard nice things, though. He was the mod in one of the old riffs. I don't remember which one. You can ask Anthony about that. Uh, the first time I really had any real interaction with him, speaking directly, is when he came to me and the other mods of the Secret Rift wanting to merge our rift and the old rift back into one to make one cohesive community. We, well, rather I, told him that we wanted nothing to do with the old rift, that's why we separated in the first place, and we promptly kicked him out the door. That was a few months ago. We heard about this rift meet and greet for Nightmare Nights, a convention in Dallas. Now, back when we heard about this, I think we heard about it uh, uh, one or two months ago, I don't remember which, we saw that it was a Riff meet and greet and assumed that it was the old Riff wanting to do a thing. We shrugged our shoulders, didn't really care, and we went about our business. Fast forward to now, one week before Nightmare Nights, and we see the description of the Rift meet and greet. Let me, let me read this to you right here. At a few different conventions, there have been brony analysts and other members of the Rift Cafe and the Secret Rift Skype groups that have wanted to meet up for a picture and meet each other in person. This panel will introduce those members, take a group photo, and allow everyone to meet each other. Now that sounds really positive and sweet, doesn't it? There's only one problem. No one in either of these groups knew about this panel a week before it was supposed to happen. How is it that... A panel at one of the major conventions was occurring, and neither group was aware. 
After doing a lot of digging, asking literally everyone, including the mods of the Secret Rift and the Old Rift Cafe, we found out that it was the Looney Turtle that planned this meetup. He didn't tell anyone. He submitted an application to Nightmare Nights and I, I guess forgot about it. It was approved and now there is a vacancy at Nightmare Nights for a panel that no one's hosting. None of the members of the Old Rift are going to be at Nightmare Nights. The members of the Seeker Rift, a few of them are going to be there, but who wants to take out their time to host a one-hour panel? When one of Looney's mods in the Old Rift went to him, this is Crimson Glow by the way, this is what he had to say. Where in any of the Rift rules does it state that you must get approval before setting up a meet? If it's in the secret Rift rules, then I couldn't have known. My cafe YouTube page doesn't have any rules about it. The cafe wiki doesn't have any information. As far as I know, the cafe chat doesn't have any rules about it. I had the YouTube page owner's permission, but seeing how that's me, that didn't mean much to you. I didn't want to announce that a panel was happening before I got permission to do it. And to reiterate, I planned on running it so you guys wouldn't have to worry about it. Now, what do you want me to do aside from saying sorry? Yes, it's serious, but honestly, what do you expect me to do? Repeat the same thing over and over again? That won't change the fact that the panel is happening. That won't change my ability to be there. It won't change anything aside from how I sign up for panels in the future. So what do you honestly want from me? Now, there is a lot wrong with this statement. First of all, you don't sign up for a panel if you don't have permission of the people you're involving. That's common sense. You don't have to have a rule specifically for that. You have been made clearly aware that we have nothing to do with each other and we want nothing to do with each other, Looney. I don't know what was going through your head. Did you think that you could just forcefully merge the groups together just because that's how you want it to be? That is not how the world works. I really hope that the mods of your room chuck you out for this because it's crap and you know it. Own up to your mistakes, Looney. Don't be a pussy. As a new generation has learned to hate Eric's guts. Now, I'll be honest with you. Had Vita done this, it would have been pretty funny. Vita is a time-honored troll. You, Looney, are presenting yourself as a reasonable human being. And we're going to tackle that right now. Looney, all you had to do was outflank me. All you had to do was be slightly more likable with Toon Critic, Golden Fox, Keyframe, Lightning Bliss, etc, etc. All you had to do was be a smidge, a slight bit better of a human being than I am. And it seems pretty easy. You're not a shrill, wailing tumblerina like some people. You routinely don't go off the deep end. Your public persona is cleaner than mine. Your private persona is arguably I love Kim Possible a lot status. Sweetie Bloom, who has no incentive to lie for me, has on more than one occasion said that British Brony in the Rift, despite him sexually harassing multiple girls in the chat, was permitted to stay. This was brought to your attention several times by several people up to and including the girls and your modding staff. Sapphire Heartsong or Heather Blossom were two people who you said did nothing? These videos usually only give the uploader satisfaction in knowing that something was done, and the audience, depending on their loyalty, will now have a new target to harass or gossip about. And that gossip can be detrimental to more than just the target. While the target of a rant video may be able to continue with their lives after being told these kinds of things, the audience might not have the same power of will. They may see someone yelling at an autistic kid and think that the mental disability is the problem. It can make a viewer with that disability think that having it means that they should commit suicide by one of the colorful methods that have been laid out for them. But the problem with that is, I have several friends, be they autistic, transgendered, Latino, black, so forth and so on. And the difference here, my dear Looney, is many of these people, be they AJ the Autistic Pony, Jerry Pete, use those tags as shields. It's an excuse that pardons further repercussions. Kind of like when Kevin Spacey got into trouble recently and tried to go, oh, by the way, I'm gay. The problem with that being is, Looney, the world, or rather at least the community, at least at least from what I've seen, is sick and fucking tired of specially challenged people weighing down the hole. So here's the cold, brutal truth. If you can keep up without keeping everyone else down, you can come along for the ride. As for forgiveness, let me ask you this, Looney. Where is my video on Fallen Wish and the GoFundMe situation? Where is my video calling her out on how she treated artists. If anyone would like to see a video at least on that second topic, please go to Pastel Prose's channel, who had a lot of courage and integrity 
While I haven't made a video on Fallen Wish for tactful reasons, I will say this. I would not hire her or trust Fallen Wish financially. And seeing as how you kicked her from your group, don't act all high and mighty with me. We'd hear about that kind of thing, right? Parents don't always monitor their children's internet history, so the cause of suicide could die with them. The fact that someone hasn't spoken up about suicide caused by a specific YouTuber shouldn't dissuade uploaders and viewers alike from keeping this very real possibility in mind. What someone says can cause the audience to do unspeakable things, so it's important that anyone with a following keep a careful eye on what they say. And if they don't, then the more dedicated viewers need to make it known that these kinds of claims are unacceptable. What I would prefer- Congratulations, Oni. I take it all back. Everything I said about Tumblr. It's the parent's responsibility to look after a child's well-being online, a la Mintheart. End story. Mintheart is a loudmouthed, foul little girl who beds older gentlemen online who I've personally told to log off the internet and went ahead and told Pristine, one of my fans, to kill herself because she tried to be reasonable. That's unacceptable. And that's the other thing. Pristine is not in my group. She's not in any of my groups. I am not some emotionless ogre that only looks after me and my own. Did you also notice here, Looney, said that the audience had the responsibility to tell people to stop? You guys, not him, you guys. Let's play that again. And the more dedicated viewers need to make it known that these kinds of claims are unacceptable. This is passing the buck with Looney Turtle. I would prefer to see, and what I think would do a lot more good than damage, is a constructive discussion video as opposed to these hate-filled rants. How would you make one of those? Well, the uploader needs to do three things. Give context, acknowledge the mistakes that were made, and supply a solution for the people involved. Rather than trying to take them down a peg, approach it like you're a friend with genuine concerns about the other person's well-being and show them a level of understanding. Give them the benefit of the doubt if you don't have all the facts. Point out the mistakes that were made by everyone involved in the conflict. That way, your target won't immediately shut down and has the opportunity to- To quote Voice of Reason, show don't tell. Now, granted, I did offer you a podcast, and why you didn't say no, I understand that wouldn't necessarily fix the problem, by the way, if we do do a podcast, Looney, it will not be in private. Whatever is put out there will be put out there. This is a damn fine suggestion. Even if I could scoff at the majority of this video, I think if I had to guess, and sadly I do, what Looney is offering is that the community is supposed to be in spirit, helpful, point out the flaws, and offer solutions. Truth of the matter is, Looney, there was literally nothing stopping you from having done this in the first place. The problem with you doing a commentary to my final thoughts on the rift would be this. You'd have to answer some questions that might make you look like a douche. As for things I've told you directly, doing interviews with personal members of your chat, making sure that they have a regular release schedule, and allowing the moderation staff to do their job, Looney, I don't just think that these things work. They've been in place since the secret whiff went live. You want an example on how we're different? When you liked someone, you let them get away with all hell before getting kicked, at which point you'd consider that a major change. I like Aino Hisenshi, and due to a lack of quality control, something he admitted that his podcast is just thrown together, and poor behavior has caused him to be tossed from the Secret Rift. The Secret Rift, in response, applauded, and I think that's a shame, and I wanted him to stay, but I didn't put myself first. This is not the first or the last time I've given you an example like this. Your answer has always been, as such, hmm, as unapathetic and as numb and uncaring as possible. This is not the first or the last time you will be told this. If you had a conversation with the Looney Turtle and had issues, please comment down below as my comment section will be not monitored for approval like the Looney Turtles is. Learn and grow. This can also help the audience as well because, just like with My Little Pony, they'll be able to see how some approaches can work and fail without having to experience them directly. Well, what if someone did something unforgivable? Did they admit to it? Yeah. Do they regret their actions? Y yeah. Then forgive them. Why? Didn't I specifically say that they did something unforgivable? Yeah, but you agreed that they admitted to their mistake. If someone genuinely regrets something, then I don't believe that they should be hounded for it because they already know. This is Koto BPM. He said when a brony killed himself, 
he was a coward, and when he was confronted by this by Sweetie Bloom in front of the room, a room, might I add, run by the Looney Turtle, he kept his mouth shut. Here is some testimony from Aeon of Dreams. This goes out to Aeon of Dreams for romanticizing yours truly as a magnificent bastard. All right. So let's rewind time back to about 2014, specifically August of 2014, because that is when the original Rift, first Rift, Malacorn's Rift, whatever you used to call it, fell apart. And after that, there were a lot of splinter groups that popped up, and one of those groups was uh, Looney's Rift, or the so-called Second Rift. And initially, uh, people like uh, me, Puzzle Brony, Toon Critic, Cam Goes, we were chosen to be part of the mod team, and initially, we all agreed to it. And for the first two or three months or so, everything was looking great. We had transparency, we had defined rules that we actually followed, and we were allowed to change them. And our admin was actually online and wouldn't undo the shit we just did, and, you know, all this great stuff. But then after that, things started to fall apart, specifically when um, the other three that weren't me or Looney began to resign from their positions... And we essentially had to replace it with the best of a bad situation. He tossed Kodo only to have Looney re-add him, and we had to band together again to get him re-kicked. Looney lit shit slide because of blatant cronyism, and it's why we hardly ever punished Biter. Well, let me rephrase that. It's hardly why... Looney hardly ever punished Biter. A mistake that they themselves have identified. If they didn't hit the nail on the coffin, then I'd explain what the real problem was, but if they already know, then what's the use in yelling at them? You claimed I apologized to you for the behavior that got me kicked. I do beg to differ. So assuming I did apologize, why did you obstruct my inclusion back into the rift, Looney? Answer me that. Were you lying about my apology, or were you lying about telling people to give someone a second chance? I'll make it easier for you. I'm pretty sure I didn't apologize. Makes me feel better? But it only makes someone who feels terrible feel even worse. Tell me, when you were in school, did a teacher ever scold you for getting an A-plus on a test? No, I'm a turtle. Just read the script. Oh, no! Why would a teacher do that? You obviously knew all the answers. Then why would it be alright to yell at someone who already admitted to their own mistakes? It wouldn't. Also, you're really amazing at what you do, and yeah, this is why I don't read your scripts. Fuck. At some point in time, you do need to cut people off. Case in point, I bend over backwards despite being advised by Ryan Reno Mills about Brick Brony. I wanted to give the kid a chance. It did not go well. There are videos on that. What you don't address here is what happens when you have to put your foot down. It's easy to say forgive, forgive, forgive. But what about everyone else who isn't being a problem? Who why should they have to lump all your bullcrap? Shouldn't people still get some sort of punishment for their actions? Yes, something needs to be done as a result of someone's actions. Whether they get banned from a group for an extended period of time, or pay people back in some way, consequences lead people to understand the gravity of their actions. However, these punishments should be settled by the parties directly involved. Not a self-righteous outsider who heard about the situation from a friend of a friend. Mods of a group can take the time to understand a situation and implement- Why yes, Jerry. People in the Bernie fandom need to be more assertive. What I do would be entirely unnecessary if the direct people involved spoke up for themselves. They don't. It's why I say that there's a demand for me. If you find this grossly ineffective, I agree. It doesn't change things, however. Punishments. Friends asked to help can take the time to understand a problem and help the people involved reach an agreement. But five people shouting about what they heard from the grapevine shouldn't be the ones to implement punishment for a situation. Oftentimes they don't have the full story, and the actions of commenters and viewers of ramp videos supply more punishment than is necessary for the mistakes that are made. You sure didn't offer the full story in this video. So tell me, Lenny, what do you feel that you deserved as a punishment? That's the only thing that you have to consider, right or wrong, the people you cut off have the full right to run off to start over and undercut your product with something of their own. Vita tried this when he ran off with Shelly D and Event Horizon and Razor Views, and thankfully, or regretfully on whoever you ask, absolutely nothing came of this problem doesn't involve you, then you should stay out of it until someone asks for your help. But with that said, people enjoy watching and creating ramp videos, so this video isn't likely to cause widespread change. I've just had a few things on my mind for a while and You'd be surprised how many times I asked. I was asked to cover Rail Pony. I was asked to cover Brick Barney. I was asked several times to cover you. People won't stop asking me to cover Jerry. I do sometimes go with what I want to do. 
But my question is, to quote Dylan Thomas, Why do you set the limit? Why do you get to morally tell him what to do? Why do you get to be his moral superior? Thank you, fuck you, bye. Hi guys, this is FNGR. If you enjoyed today's episode, there are two videos that I'm going to link at the end card annotation. One will be on How Not to Brony, and one will be on the Persons channel. They're one of them's basically, well, they're, they're both shit posts. You'll probably enjoy them. They're a lot more uplifting. One's called a PSA for the Analysis Rift, and I stand behind it, as well as does Kichi FIM, as well as Lilac Galaxy. I don't know any of the mods, probably barring Twist of Fate, who had a problem with it. As for the joke video over here, the denied video. It's explained in the PSA, but it's pretty funny and I think you guys will enjoy it. Take care.